the Reverend Dr David Clark. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Uh, New Zealanders, Mr Speaker, have simple aspirations. We want to lead a good life with the people closest to us. And we want the chance to own our own home. We want an income that means we can look out for the people we love. We want time to spend in the outdoors enjoying the best that our clean green country has to offer. That is the New Zealand that I grew up in. It is the stuff of the Kiwi dream, a dream that is central to our country's identity. Unfortunately, the current government's obsession with the interests of an in crowd are crowding out those very aspirations for an increasing number of New Zealanders. And inequality is growing in New Zealand. We know this because we're told we have a rock star economy, yet real household incomes in some parts of New Zealand are still lower than they were when this government came into office. And that is over half a decade since the global financial crisis ended. We know this because home ownership is now at its lowest level in 60 years. Our economy needs to work for Kiwis, not just for a handful of National Party in-club cronies. As I said, things used to be different. We've had an economy that worked for us before. And on this side of the House, we know that under an Andrew Little-led Labor government, we can have that again. I grew up in the land of milk and honey, knowing that New Zealanders could foot it with the best in the world. Our living standards were better then. We, we measured better on the scales than those countries we like to measure ourselves against. Back then, success wasn't guaranteed. My father built his own small business. He had to learn new skills to make that happen. Around the same time, my mother went back to high school. And then eventually she went on to study to become a doctor. Both of my parents made sacrifices for their successes. And things were tight at home when I was younger. But in our country of opportunity, when the Kiwi dream was real, talent and persistence paid off. Plenty of kids I know had far more difficult childhoods than I had, Mr Speaker. And plenty of them have succeeded beyond their wildest dreams. Back then, it seemed like anything was possible. The Kiwi dream involved the possibility of the poorest kid in the neighbourhood succeeding and becoming one of the wealthiest people in the country. Now we see an economy that is increasingly weighted in favour of those who already have privilege those who are already doing well. And we see an economy that puts up barriers to stop other people getting ahead. Of course, there are Kiwis who continue to succeed today, but we all know that conditions are tougher, particularly under this government. Fewer small businesses are being created. The income tax changes have ensured that the very wealthiest portion of New Zealanders have a higher income than they used to, while middle New Zealand is going backwards. We need a government that backs the Kiwi dream. We need to make it possible for more Kiwis to succeed. Truth is that our economy doesn't work for us like it used to. Those of us who are doing OK are uncomfortable with the fact that in the sandpits our children play in, there are other kids who don't have food necessarily for school, who don't have shoes, who don't have raincoats. This is not the New Zealand that we aspire to. This is not the New Zealand that we all dream of. It is not the Kiwi dream. And it shouldn't be like this, and it doesn't need to be like this. Nobody I know thinks that the growing inequalities under this government are a good thing. Nobody I know thinks that this harsher reality is OK. It is not what New Zealand is about. When I grew up, most Kiwis dreamed of owning their own home. But for many today, this is just a pipe dream. A lot of households have two parents working just to meet the rent. It didn't used to be this way. Things have become unbalanced. 
and we need to face up to that fact and say what needs to be done to put it right. If today's New Zealanders are to enjoy home ownership again, we need decent incomes. If people are to spend time with their loved ones like previous generations did, we need a credible plan for our economy. Unfortunately, this government's silver bullet at the moment is the TPPA. They would have us believe that prosperity will flow and all the economic crises and difficulties that the country is facing, the challenges we're facing, will diminish, will be gone. But that deal was a long time coming and it has delivered a lot less than would be expected ordinarily. The deal was, in fact, for dairy, it was rubbish. Yeah, that's right, rubbish. The member is correct. An independent study shows the portion of our country's wealth going to working people will decrease and 6,000 job losses will eventuate in the first 10 years of this agreement. That's the only independent study that's been done on the labour market. This government hasn't even researched what the TPPA will do to the labour market. It doesn't care that the wealth will not go to working people anymore. It doesn't care that jobs will be lost. New Zealand failed to even ask for home ownership sovereignty protections that Australia, Malaysia and others achieved in the agreement. Why was it good enough for Australia to have protection from foreign speculators not resident in their country and not good enough for New Zealand to even ask for it in the deal? Why on earth? So we have Tufts, the Peterson Institute, the World Bank estimating that New Zealand's economy will benefit very little from a ratified TPPA, less than a rounding error uh, most in, in government forecasts. This government could have and should have done so much better for Kiwis. This government has already broken plenty of promises. It promised to grow exports as a proportion of our economy to 40 per cent. Well, it's dropped below 30 per cent and it's dropping further every year. This government is failing to set goals that it can achieve for itself. The reason that it's failing to achieve those goals, though, is because it's not taking the steps to deliver on them. Seven years on from the global financial crisis, they're below 30 per cent and trending down. And overhyping the benefits of one trade deal has done nothing to halt this decline. Mr Speaker, you don't need a textbook to know that a wealthy elite prospering at the expense of a dwindling middle class is a recipe for economic stagnation. The signs are all around us. Drifting isn't working. The current government seem content to roll from one dairy price cycle to the next, underinvesting in regional infrastructure and content to blame the farmers when things slide. Well, it won't do. We need a, diversify, a diversified economy with deep skills if we are to realise the Kiwi dream again. We need a government that creates the conditions for high value jobs and plenty of them. The number of people out of work in the past year that were not before is up 15,000 in the past year alone. We need to better support the small businesses that create the jobs uh, that will make the change that we need. There is much to be done to make our economy work for New Zealanders, if only there was the will to do it. If there was the will to make our economy benefit all, not just a few in-club National Party cronies. The solutions are obvious. The research and development tax credits, tax simplification, red tape removal, uh, the, the possibilities are endless. We've heard them in this House before, but they are not the recipe this government is offering. This government is offering more of the same, more of the same, and no new ideas. But solutions are not coming. The OECD estimates that New Zealand's economy is about 15 per cent smaller as a result of inequalities growing in recent decades. Inequalities have been a 15 per cent handbrake on our prosperity, yet this government seems desperate to continue down the same track, ignoring the warning lights on the dashboard and the increasingly sickening smell of burning rubber. They are locked more, they're locking more and more middle New Zealanders out of the Kiwi dream, and they show no compunction whatsoever. The story of my parents' success, to conclude, Mr Speaker, shows that what was once possible, it shows that plenty of people once did it. The Labor Party is determined to see the Kiwi dream become a possibility for more people again. 
Labor's Working Futures Plan of three years free post-school post education is in stark contrast with National's tired approach to leading the country. We need the Kiwi dream and we need a Labor government to deliver it.